Uh, welcome to the podcast. We like to start your week right, and we do that, Joe, it's with a bit of a joke off. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us are quite good at telling jokes, like Tom Wren. Yeah. Good. Me, good. You, good. Abby, horrible. <laughs> Every single time. It's like the cricket's like, well, this is where we come into it. She says some people have got a skill set and hers is not telling jokes. Yeah. Good news reader. Exceptional. Great news reader. Horrible joke teller. Spot on. Mm. All right. Anyway, morning abs. We'll smash her again next week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we celebrated Mother's Day as well. A bit of a wrap from the weekend. And what it did turn out was that uh, you were very, very busy. <laughs> You, are you the only one on the planet that turns into this genuine pinup girl for Mum's Gone Wild whenever this song comes yeah, on? Yeah. Um, well, I'm not the only one because my two sister-in-laws had a red hot crack. One of them put it back out doing a front flip. Classic. To this song. That's, yeah, I mean, he sends me into front flips. Does Flo Rider. Oh, yeah, does he what? <laughs> and I had a bit of a credit card debacle. Did someone run up charges on my credit card that my mother lost or did not? Did my mother not lose them and I... They were just charges that were supposed to be there. Who's yeah. to say? Who's to say? It's neither here nor there. What we can confirm, though, is we spoke to Tom Glass and our head of Have You Been Paying Attention, which was a lot of fun. This is the podcast. Huru. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you. Things escalated yesterday, it's fair to say. So yeah. it started out, it was all very wholesome. Had um, breakfast in bed, and I should mention at this point that um, my husband's away, so all the boys in our family are away on a family holiday in Europe at the moment. So no boys. Boyless. For the whole day. So, anyway, started out breakfast in bed. Um, the girls brought in a basket full of gifts, which was so lovely. I got a vibrating facial roller. Oh. <laughs> Thank God you said facial roller. <laughs> there for a second. I was hovering around the dump button. <laughs> it's one of those stone facial rollers, but it vibrates. It's lovely. Nice. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Peyton Summer. Jeez. <laughs> Oh Just really looking after mummy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll straighten up. Um, they also gave me this beautiful little mum's voucher booklet. That is that. really nice. So look at this, producer Zoe. What, but it's redeemable for different stuff. So redeemable for breakfast in bed, a big hug, um, a sleep in, nice. all those sorts of things. And um, one of them is like redeemable for one day of not fighting. So at one point oh, yesterday nice. when they were like throwing mandarins at each other at their heads, I was like, you two, get along. And she's like, well, you're going to have to use your voucher, <laughs> aren't you? I'm sorry. I'm going to need to say the voucher before anything continues. <laughs> yes, exactly right. Good so we go shouting. all went to lunch at my sister-in-law's place. So it was me and my two sister-in-laws who are my favourite people in the world and three grandmas and about 7,000 kids. And so we had a we had a couple of wines and then we sit down and as we always do, we watched a concert from the kids because they always get up and perform solo dances and all that sort of stuff. And by the end of it, we were so over it. We're like, right, it's mum's turn. <laughs> it's the mum's turn. So introducing the adults, yeah. And then this kicks in. Oh, no. <laughs> Not this. I think we all know what this means now. Oh, uh. There was twerking. There was a front flip from my sister-in-law, which was absolutely epic. There is video evidence of this. The socials guy is in the process of trying to convince me to put it online. <laughs> Not sure about that. But the upshot is we had the best day. And now we're going to, I think, moving forward, ban all men from Mother's Day. Yeah. I think that's the key. Uh, there's only one man that's invited, and that's Flo Rider. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll be there. The other thing I really like as well is that uh, if it's your sister-in-law's place or definitely your place, yeah. that your neighbours will be sitting there going, we're having such a lovely day, and then they hear this. <laughs> Quick kids, get to bed, get to bed, get to bed. <laughs> well, Hazy, the new season of Have You Been Paying Attention starts tonight at 8.40 on the beautiful Channel 10 network, and the star of the show is the one and only Tom Gleisner. Good morning. Good morning, Jodie and Hazy. Nice to be back for, wait for it, our 11th. Season. Is that 11 yeah. seasons? That's outrageous. Oh, it's ridiculous, isn't it? But um, here we are, and it's, it's always always fun. It's like the first day of school to get the get the gang back together and um, dive into the news. Very nice. Now, um, we, have a, we have a small issue with Sam Pang at the Nova Network because <laughs> he left us. Um, your beef with Sam, is that, is that like from the heart? Well, do you know, I don't know whether you saw a new idea over the summer, but apparently Sam and I are locked in a feud. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> and if it's a new idea, it must be true. Um, 
so uh, yes, that's it. it's it's an ongoing issue. There's there's been some intervention over the summer, and I'm I'm sure we're going to make it through this season. You know, uh, the best of friends. Do you know what staggers me? There are people on this planet that would actively purchase the new idea, read that article, and genuinely think that you two are feuding. <laughs> I, the, the great thing I love the thing I love about a new idea article is that they never quote anyone by name. It's always sources, yeah, um, insiders say, yep, or in our case, gal pals. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's a, a, a wonderful, wonderful list of uh, highly authoritative um, commentators. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah. Hey Tom, um, well, to say something and ask you something controversially, who's your favourite? Who's your favourite or your top two or top three members of the panel? That is that is like choosing your favourite children. I mean, we've, well, t- you know, tonight's lineup certainly has a couple of you know Anne Edmonds, um, Marty Sheargold's uh, uh, returning. Um, uh, having Ed and Sam every week, I sort of think of them as like the bookends. That do- yeah. doesn't matter who we've got in between. Um, that they're they're really um, really solid. I love getting people from overseas. We sometimes get them as um, guest quiz masters because there's a there's a slight thing of what they don't really know what the show's about. Um, so some of our guest quiz masters who come in from overseas and clearly they're they're going to about to go sack their um, their publicist for <laughs> putting them onto this show, but it's it's a real joy to have them. I just love that they stand there and think they're a guest on the show and just get the absolute pi double five ripped out of them, and they've got no <laughs> idea what's happening. Who's who's been the most fun just to rip it, rip it? Well, it, it, I tell you what, it's um. It, we don't have it so much these days, but back in the days of The Bachelor, we, we'd always get one of the little one of the little precious treasures that had been <laughs> tossed out in, you know, in week three of The Bachelor, and uh, she was often coming off like this massive publicity um, uh, schedule of doing all these interviews, thinking that this is the start of a huge career, and and our show is often the last bit of television they were ever going to do, um, and we'd we'd send them off in style with a with a. As you say, a very, uh, very uh, informed and hearty interview um, as a guest quiz master. Hey, Tom, you're a man who knows pretty much everything, and you can smell a fake headline, I reckon, a mile off. And particularly when your name's getting mentioned, a new idea. That's probably the biggest mm. warning sign of all time. <laughs> um, we just want to play a little game with you, if you can. Just a, a little bit of fake news or real news. Are you ready for this? Sure. All right, let's do it. Fake news. You are fake news. It's all fake news. Fake news. Fake news. I'd like to welcome the fake news media, which is very good. So what we're going to do is uh, we just want to roll out a couple of these little headlines and we're going to get your your absolute perfection when it comes to knowledge just to see if you can smell a fish or two. Mm. Okay. All right. So let's start with a fisherman story. Two fishermen caught cheating at Ohio tournament sentenced to 10-day jail term and forfeit 100k boat. Does that sound something that's real or fake? Yeah, you should put Ohio in the headline and anything's possible. So I'll go with true. <laughs> yeah. Yes. On, that is true. Outrageous stuff. All right, here's another one. Um, and I, How tall are you exactly, Tom, can I ask? I'm ju- well, in the old money, just under six foot. So five, ten. Okay, this doesn't uh, this doesn't concern you, but it does to a lot of my vertically challenged friends. Leg lengthening surgery is gaining popularity amongst men as the short jokes continue. Mm. Mm. Mm, I've heard of lengthening surgery for men, but not leg lengthening. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go false. Yeah, yes. spot on. Very He's good. good. He's good. Thank you. Rec- one more. I reckon we've got one more for you. Okay, this one yeah, very controversial. Man kept father's dead body in freezer so he could talk to him. <laughs> uh, gee, that's somber, and yeah, I'm, I'll go true. That is true as well. Oh my god, Tom. that's three from three. Whoa, wow. yeah. far out! All, you... all that prep with uh, your new idea experiences kept you in good stead. <laughs> I like to feel like I can spot something that's dubious from a long way. Although, although the clickbait headlines make it harder and harder because you just go, no, nah, this, this, I'm not going to read this. I don't care. I'm not going to read this. Um, yeah. It'll be Jodie and Hazy's shock medical scare. And you go, no, this nah. will be one of them's got asthma. This is ridiculous. But you still <laughs> click on it and there you go. Tom Gleisner, have you been paying attention? It returns to our screens tonight, 8.40 on 10 and 10 play. Thank you so much for having a chat. Thanks, Jodie. Thanks, Hazy. It- it's time for a winter trip with Jump On What If, the place to go for quick Aussie getaways. For me, it's just getting in the car and just going for a cruise and exploring. For accommodation, flights and more, book on the What If app. What If, it's Aussie for travel. Let's just have some fun. Let's set you in the right direction to start your week. It's time for the joke off. Now that's a joke. That was a joke. That's a joke. A joke. That's a terrible joke. Oh. 
<laughs> what else do you do on a Monday morning but tell a really good joke to kickstart the week? <laughs> I mean, for example, I mean, check this one out. It just came in via the text line. And when I say text line, it's actually one of my jokes. A pair of cows were talking in the field. One says, have you heard about the mad cow disease that's going around? And the other one says, yeah, it makes me glad that I'm a penguin. <laughs> So that's what we're talking about, all right? Okay, that's not bad. Okay. That's not bad. All right. Um, Abs, you got one? You going next? No, mine's really good, so I'm going to wait. Yours was terrible last week. It was, week. it was. So it was. I can't roll the dice anymore. It's about right. redemption for you, Abby. I'm yeah. going to go with this one. All right. How many telemarketers does it take to change a light bulb? I don't know. Okay. How many telemarketers? Only one, but he has to do it while you're eating dinner. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, again. <laughs> We're getting in a dang- dangerous territory, Yavs. If you keep this up, you're going to get expelled from the joke off. Oh, come okay? on. Now, do you have any off the top of your head again? No, I don't have any. I'm so bad at jokes. All right. Okay. Jokes All right. are fun. Can I just do one more quick one, just on behalf of Bruce Havanethy again? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, you ready? Yep. Um, so, yes, full credit to the great man, Bruce Abernathy from Channel 7. So, my mate was driving his car the other day, and there was another bloke who was just swerving in and out of traffic. Absolute lunatic. Yeah. You know those type of blokes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh, they're annoying. Yeah. Anyway, looked in when he got next to him and saw that he was actually really, really small. Yeah. So, one of those real little knobs. Yep. Like, small man <laughs> syndrome, all that type of thing. Anyway, he swerved out in front of him, slammed on the brakes, and then my mate has crashed into his rear end. Yeah. So then you thought, oh, here we go, it's absolutely on. And then uh, the bloke got out, walked up to his uh, car and said to my mates, well, I'm not happy. <laughs> and my, my mate said, well, then which one are you? <laughs> <laughs> you get it, Abby? You get it? Yes. Ah, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I've got a nice little blonde joke for you this morning, and I can do those because I am one. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Three hours every couple of months in the salon, I'm a natural blonde. <laughs> so, there it is. That's a good way to finish. Very good stuff. No. Okay, so one day a blonde went up to a soft drink machine, put in some money, and a soft drink came out. And she got really, really excited and started to put more money into the machine. And the more she did, the more soft drinks came out, Hazy. Yeah. After a while, someone walked up to her and asked if they could please get a soft drink. And she got really, really angry and she looked at him and she said, Get out of my face, I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Money blogs these days. He thought it was a, it was like a she was just exchanging money for goods and services. <laughs> but she thought it was like a gambling machine. Yes. <laughs> That's what we're talking Cause about. Because she's blonde. Because she's blonde. <laughs> Sports Wrap with Tom Wren. <laughs> That's what you do to us, Tom Wren. That's what you do to the people, eh? Well, you know, I just try and give you what you want, you know, so. Mm. You walk into the room and everyone starts, you know, giggling like schoolgirls and, ooh, Tommy's here. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Oh. Uh, Ready? how was your weekend? How was Mother's Day? Really good, thank you. Um, fantastic yesterday for Mum and went and saw her and Sarah's mum as well and and Sarah, of course, and Jodie, happy Mother's Day to you as well. Thank you very much. Hope we, you had a great day. We overindulged in a lot of things yesterday, oh, but that's it what was it's, good. That is what it's all about. And Hazy, I hope you had a lovely day as well. Oh, thank you very much, Tom. I was at work, but my wife had a nice little day at her mum's house. Beautiful. And everyone celebrated accordingly. We didn't quite... Uh, Rip the top of a few no. like other households. No, I'll show you the video in a minute, Tom. But um, but me and my sister in laws took over the performance because the kids mm. always do a concert, and we're like, that's enough. Yes, you get can. us up it's time there. Time for mum to shine. Yep. Get a bit of apple bottom jeans, boots with the fur on, yeah. and away we went. There was a bit of twerking action. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you can catch handy. that video at www.mumsgonewild.com. <laughs> Six wins in a row for Port Adelaide. They get the four points and the percentage boost. Oh, let's talk some footy. Yeah. Port Adelaide. Uh, did it easily, as you'd expect. Yep, and it wasn't a great game, was it, Hazy? But six in a row, first time since 2021. They're in the top four now, so going along well. I'm a bit concerned about some of the injuries. They're starting to get Todd Marshall concussed again. That's two in three weeks. Um, that's yeah. that's a worry. Um, so he won't play this week. They might get Dixon back, but they're doing what they need to. They're winning this week, though, is going to be massive against Melbourne. Yeah. So yeah, it'll be a real test, won't it? That's, that's going to be a huge game. Like, that's... That's going to give us a really good gauge of where they're at. But like you said, they're doing what they need to. Jason Horn Francis, again, you know, answered the critics and, and 
handled it really maturely, I thought, and so did the team. So I didn't get to see the game. Was he booed down there? there he was. was. Yeah, but you know what? It wasn't actually as bad as what it's been for some of the other sides in the yeah. comp, which is, is crazy. But yeah. I think it probably helped that it was in... Tasmania and not in Melbourne. I think it would have been okay. more fierce mm. if it was in Melbourne. Yeah. And also when Jason touched the ball and the North supporters are booing him, how about you hold it for your own players when Port scored 94 <laughs> points <laughs> off direct turnovers? Oh, they are miles off, aren't they? They're in a bit of strife and they've got an injury crisis and all sorts of things. Yep. So uh, North Melbourne supporters are a passionate bunch and it's a big, strong um, club, but yeah, they're going through some stuff. They are at the moment and that's Port now. Nine of the last ten they've won against North who were a bogey team early on but a really... Solid win, 7-2. and two. If you said that at the start of the season, take it every day of the week. Yeah, mm. absolutely. All what right. about the Crowies? They look good. Oh, yes. It's been a very happy Mother's Day for the Adelaide Crows. A 52-point trouncing of St Kilda. So they're a top eight side, and they deserve to be. Yeah, and Hazy, I love that call. Let's call it. I think the Crows, they should absolutely be gunning to play finals. They're 5-4. and four. They're inside the eight. And they could easily be 6-3, and three, probably 7-2. and two. They've had a couple of games they should have won. Collingwood, for example, that they didn't. That was just blistering yesterday. Mm. I mean, they embarrassed St Kilda, who have been brilliant all season, um, but they bullied them. And, you know, the way they cut them open, fabulous. So, Jordan Dawson, Brownlow threat? Has to be. Has to be. He's been so good. He's been outstanding, hasn't he? What, 33 touches again yeah. yesterday? Um, you know, and... I didn't know he had that in his kit bag, winning the ball on the inside as well as the outside, Hazy. Yep. He, he's having a fantastic year. And so are his team. And the forward line is so dynamic. Their efficiency, once they get the ball inside 50, is off the charts. It's the best in the comp. So if they can keep that going, keep getting the ball into Tex and Fogarty and Rankin and those guys, bang, mm. they're away. Hey, Joe, sorry to bury the lead. Kim, <laughs> you listen to Sharon. All right, now I've been in 29 netball premierships. I've played indoor cricket in four states and I've shot put it at a national level. Now, I think I know what I'm talking about, all right? Fine, let's talk about the big stuff, all right? <laughs> oh, my God. I went along to the game on the weekend, Rennie, and it was just outstanding. A couple of little injury concerns for us, though. Tipper Dwan. Mm. I think I've no- have you heard how she is? I think she's just vowing to take it one day at a time. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> but she did manage to give full credit to the girls. <laughs> Um, And I was telling Hazy this morning, we went down on the court afterwards. We were lucky enough to go down there and say hi to a few people. And um, Shamira Sterling, who is the most popular player on that Mm -hmm. side, um, was the last one back. They were yelling at her to come into the rooms to cool down and do all their post-match stuff. And she stayed out there and signed every last kid's whatever they wanted and had a photo with my little girl, even though she was, like, desperate to get... Like, what a champion. How good's that? And that's something she'll remember for, you know, the rest of her life. It's great, that kind of interaction. And they're a game clear now on top. The Fever lose again by a goal on the weekend. There were some great results and close games Mm. in the league on the weekend. Thunderbirds won comfortably. Like you said, a couple of injury concerns, a little bit worried, but one game clear. If they can get everything together, why not take it out? It's time they... Got well, in the finals and win the title. They will play finals now no after doubt. that win on the weekend. So mm. I am booking my flights to Melbourne. There you go. Love Lock that. it in. Talk about um, girls going wild. Imagine yeah. that. <laughs> uh, Reds, unfortunately, as well, they're going to have to do it the hard uh, way to get to the grand final. Uh, they're going to go to Central Coast next week or yes, in a couple of weeks? Saturday night. Yes. Yep. And try and do there. Hey, um, Randy, before we let you go. Yes. We do a little thing every Monday morning now because the Monday called the Monday morning joke off. Oh. And we thought, who's one of the funniest, most handsome people that we know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's Tom well, This Rand. is pressure. This yeah. is pressure because I reckon you tell a great joke. Oh, I, all right. Yeah. So my turn or are you going to go first? No, 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 we've, we've done ours. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. My joke is hopefully it's, um, you know, politically appropriate in today's day and age. It's not going to so be that bad. Just, just before we start, anyone who's ever said, don't take this the wrong way or <laughs> I'm not this, I'm not that, you are. No offence, yeah. but. No okay. offence, but this is going to be this offensive. Is, why did the blonde take bread to the bathroom? Why? To feed the toilet duck. <laughs> That's not bad. No, no. <laughs> so then you've got a certified blonde in stitches. Sorry, jokes. Uh, yeah. No, that's right. I told a blonde joke earlier. Oh, yeah. good. <laughs> Real good. But she doesn't know why she's laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Neither do I. It's Jody and Hazy. The biggest breaking story this town has ever seen. It's just you are just not found your own. This is so juicy. Jody's juice. Taylor Swift has broken from her soul on stage to defend a fan from a security guard. So she paused mid-performance on her heiress tour and she was singing Bad Blood um, and she basically shouted at the security guard who who was physically pushing the girls back Mm. and they've all jumped on Twitter since and said, yeah, like he was manhandling us. So here's Taylor stepping in. Have a listen. I'll tell you who 
he's got bad blood, the security guard and Taylor Swift now. <laughs> Can you imagine being berated by Taylor Swift at her concert? <laughs> Can, do you think he's still gainfully employed? Yes. Well, I, I don't think he is, but uh, in terms of a Taylor Swift concert, compare it to, say, I don't know, like a, an Eminem or a Dre concert back in the day where maybe it's a little bit more dangerous. Yeah. But yeah. the uh, the Swifties, so I'll tell you what, death by a thousand cuts, they'll gang up on oh. you. <laughs> now, one of the City Girls dramatically collapsed on air after being dumped last night on Farmer Wants a Wife. Um, so, producer sent a radio message to the Raw Flying Doctor Service. It was that serious? Yeah. And then she wakes up and then she's all groggy and a little fuzzy and then she goes, oh my God, I just got dumped and she had to relive it all over again. <laughs> Do you want to have a listen? Let's, let's relive it now. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. Deep breaths. Okay. You right? Mm. Hey, Out of that box. Are you okay, honey? Can we get someone over here, please? I mean, when does it end? No, I don't know. Because you pass out because you got dumped, and then you wake up, and they say you got dumped, and then you pass out, and then you wake <laughs> up. And, you know what's happening? Yeah, you got dumped, and then you pass out. It does not stop. <laughs> What a journey. <laughs> will never, ever end, will it? It's a <laughs> gift that keeps on giving. You're dumped. <laughs> Tell me that was a dream. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Kane Middleton has paid homage to Queen Elizabeth II during her surprise performance at the grand finale of Eurovision. What about this? Yeah. So she um, put her incredible piano skills on display. In the opening segment of the finale, she wore a statement cobalt blue gown along with a pair of these sparkling silver pendant earrings once worn by the Queen. Oh. Um, so she, you can see her, she's sitting um, doing an instrumental piece on the piano in Windsor Castle's grandiose crimson drawing room. Have a listen to Kate Skills. <laughs> so, uh, have I got this right? Is that Kate just sort of churning out some piano on top of like a bit of a bed? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> they've, they've pimped it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that what you give to the beginners like on a Yamaha and you've got the backing track? <laughs> you sort of play some tunes over Can the top. Can you remember that? You, you could put like the auto play on and it would be like the backing track on it's your like, little... do 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 And you're like... <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> That's what Kate did. And then everyone in England's like, yes, well done. Oh, jeez. Oh. Remarkable. <laughs> she is remarkable. <laughs> doom, 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 She's our doom. next Elton John. <laughs> and that's Joey's Juice. I had what I thought was a scamming experience this week. So this is how this drama all unfolded. I hand my credit card to my mother. Mm. She's going down to the shops to get some supplies, right? And then for several days I'm like... Where's Colleen? <laughs> 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 She's in the Maldives. She left. She's gone. Nice going. And so for the next couple of days, I'm like, did, did Mum give, did Colleen give me back my credit card? Because I couldn't find it yeah. anywhere. And I was like, Mum, what did you do with it? And so, and then I thought, I'll just double check my account just to make sure nothing untoward has happened here. And then there are like, since it was missing, there were sort of three or four different charges for the app store. And I'm like, outrageous. Mm. That's someone's, oh, uh, uh, call. Call Bank SA. And Fraudulent. Fraud, fraud. Yeah. Someone's ribbing me off. Ra rah, rah. And they're like, you're going to have to go down to the police and make a stolen credit card report. Yeah. And it was all the big drama. And then I'm thinking, oh, God, I'm going to have to get a new card. And then all those automatic little transactions that go along, you're going to have to change all those numbers again. Oh. Unbelievably inconvenient. What? And I, and I was miffed at Colleen. I was like, come on, Mum. Like, ugh, one job. Yeah. How hard is it, Colleen? For yeah. goodness sake. I mean, it's 2023. Grow up. Yes. So after yeah. all that, I order my new card. That comes. <laughs> everything gets cancelled. Blah, blah, blah. I have a right little tanty with coal. And then... Um, I go to pay for parking <laughs> uh, outside of court the other day and I've opened up my wallet and there it was. She was just nestled into a little pouch <laughs> that I hadn't seen. <laughs> this is a big test. It's a big test when you find yourself in a situation like that, for example, happens in our house all the time when I get so... I aggressively blame every member in our house yeah. for losing something of mine. Yes. 
And then I realised I left it in the back of my car. Yeah, yeah, it's good time. So I had to grovel and apologise to Colleen and just go, sorry about that. Did you, though? She was in my wallet the whole time. Oh, I rang and I took the whole, um, like, ha, 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 how funny. What about this? I've just found my credit card approach. And she was like, did you? Yeah. Okay. Did you apologise? Yeah, yeah. I said, oh. so I was sorry. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I did. <laughs> 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 exactly. Yeah, sorry. Oh. Sorry that you're an idiot. Yeah, and then I realised that some of those charges were probably like your Stan, your Spotify, that sort of vibe. Yep. Like, oh no, what mm. an idiot. But let's do this. Thirteen, twenty, four, ten. Have you ever had charges racked up on your credit card? Yeah. You had your card stolen, didn't you? Yeah, so I, um, our car got broken into and my wallet got stolen. So, I mean, I don't want to invite criminals, but the car was left unlocked <laughs> and the wallet was sitting on my seat. So, if ever there was an opportunity to get it stolen, it was then. And it, it, the, the little wallet was sitting on the front seat and it was going like this. Yeah, take me! It was going, hey, take I, me! Someone was walking past and I goes, Oi, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Look down here. Free money. Oh, look at this. Check out my guts. says two pink $5 notes. In I, reckon, <laughs> I reckon you could take these. And my credit card got stolen. And I was like, oh, here we go. i got to cancel it. I'll check what's been purchased. Yeah. <laughs> a 600 mil Coke and a pie <laughs> from West Croydon OTR <laughs> was purchased. And that's it. I'm so fine with that too. Oh, my God. So fine. It's really cash in here, mm. boys. How old were they? You're 11, you reckon? 11, oh, 12? Yeah, I'm not really sure. But they could have gone really hard. Yeah. But probably not old enough to even purchase cigarettes. So, yes. Yeah. Youngsters. Just the Coke and a sausage roll, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> All good. 132410, get involved this morning. Have you ever had someone steal your credit card and rack up a heap of charges? <laughs> All right. We'll take your calls next. 132410. Um, let's go to Olivia in Greenwich. Good morning to you, Olivia. Hello. How are you? Good. What happened, Olivia? Um, so, my ex and I broke up, and then it took me about six months to realise he was still using my card oh. and with Uber accounts. Oh, <laughs> my God. That is so oh shifty. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I just love that he's sitting in the back of an Uber at 1am on a Sunday morning, just driving home going, I'll show her. Yeah. I'll show Olivia. <laughs> so, Olivia, did, did you confront him? So, what did you say? Did you confront him? I messaged him and no replies. No oh. replies. Shifty bugger. Yeah, I think that, I think that, takes, that goes into a new area, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's effectively stealing. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. All then right. Let's do this. 13, 24, 10. When have you had charges racked up on your credit card? I thought that I'd been scammed on my credit card um, because I was like went missing and then there were a whole heap of charges that I didn't couldn't identify. And then next minute, oh, there she was just nestled in the middle of my wallet where I couldn't see it. Just just playing a little game of hide and seek. Yeah. In the meantime, some of the destructive things that you said to your mother <laughs> I did were not. just irreparable. I thought that, that I thought it was on Colleen. I thought that she'd dropped it and someone had picked it up and racked up some charges. But um here we are. Yeah. And so, you, you, you thought that you apologised, but yeah. maybe you just apologised in your head? I'll do it now. Soz Colleen. Soz. <laughs> no, no Soz doesn't count. <laughs> yes, Will you say the word soz? <laughs> That is not part of a formal apology. 100% it counts. On behalf of Jody Colleen, we're so sorry that she misplaced her card. Oh, okay. Let's go to <laughs> Natalie from Gawler Belt. Good morning, Natalie. Morning. Okay. Have you been scammed? I have. I haven't actually had my credit card stolen, but on three different occasions I've had charges put on it. Oh. What sort of charges? Um, if, or just... There was one from an Apple store in Sydney, and it was like, it, it, it racked up to $800. <gasps> um, and then there was one from overseas, I don't even know the company, it was two charges and then two international fees. Wow. And then, yeah, another occasion, I can't remember, but each time I've had to cancel my card and get a new one sent out. <laughs> no, I don't know what's going on. You don't have your credit card details as part of your bio on Instagram or something, do you? <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> um, Natalie, you almost yes. sound like the kind of person if I said I was from the ATO and I've got a you know nine hundred dollar um, deposit to give you. Could, would you just read out your credit card numbers right now? <laughs> no, and I do get emails and texts like that, and I delete and block them straight away. Good yeah. girl, she's just, learning. If I could just take this in a different direction, Natalie, I, I do actually have a friend who's a Nigerian prince, <laughs> <laughs> and he has a lot of money that he needs to get rid of. <laughs> Are you interested? No, thank you. Uh, oh, she's learning. Yes, I love it. We're getting there. That's good. She's growing and evolving. <laughs> good on you, now. Really good. We're in the dark. Are you telling me you built a time machine?
Daisy's on this Daisy. Monday. Welcome. What a weekend it was. Yeah, Crows beat the Saints, Port Flog North. Now it's time to get back on the straight and narrow and pump that little brain up with some knowledge. Well, I thought you were going to talk about Mother's Day, but that's right. You just go down the footy path. Stop living in the past, Joe. Let's just move on, all right? Let's take it one day at a time, not look too far ahead. Full credit to the boys, 110%, okay? Right, okay. Okay, let's start in 2004. Shrek 2. Premieres at the Canes Film Festival. And everyone's thinking, could it possibly be as good as the first one? And yes, it was. Yes, and all the smug people at Canes are like, man, I love this. <laughs> I don't want to get up and, and, and clap, but I feel like I should because it's that good. You got a piece! It's a cat, donkey. Come here, little kitty, kitty, kitty. Come on. Just kitty. <laughs> Yeah, Shrek. Oh, gosh. Oh, you're not very intelligent. Yes, I am. We all love Shrek. 1970, Pink Floyd performed a concert in the UK that was so loud that it reportedly killed a fish in a nearby lake. No. No. <laughs> Poor you, fish. You are making that up. Oh, uh, death by sound. <laughs> so loud that the fish was like, nah, that's enough for me. <laughs> and ha- how do they measure that the fish died by an overload of sound. I know. Like the fish is floating and they go, no, oh, that's not your stock standard fish death. No, was, was there a fish autopsy? Yeah, get it in for a study. <laughs> <laughs> 2003, Aldi opened their first supermarkets in Victoria, West Heidelberg and Churnside Park. So everyone raves about Aldi. I haven't really gotten the train yet. No, I haven't as well, but, and everyone in particular raves about the meat. Oh, right. Very, very good. Okay. Good, different. <laughs> That's the slogan, I think. Um, 2004, <laughs> Arsenal became the first UK soccer team in 115 years to end a season in England's top division, unbeaten. We had nothing really to play for. It was more the honour of, of being an invincible. Arsenal looking to invent something again around the edge of the box. They've done just that. It's Vieira. Oh, it's a picture goal. That's why they're the champions. Good on you, Arsenal. And good on you if you're a proper, genuine soccer supporter over there because it means you're probably mad as a cut snake. Yes, exactly right. And hats off to any soccer team that's got the word arse in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good stuff. And the number one song on May 15th in 2013, Blurred Lines by Robin Thicke and Pharrell Williams. Pharrell, what an absolute delight. Robin Thicke, bit of a dirty bird. Yeah, it got real pervy vibes, this song, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, now couple that we know what was happening behind the scenes. A questionable lyrics, I reckon. It's a bit handsy, Robin. Yeah. Just a bit handsy. That's all right. Actually, no, it's not all right at all. What am I talking about? (laughs) Been a big show. Oh, it has been a big show today. I'm exhausted. Mm. Uh, Tomorrow, though, Are You Schnitting Me is back. That's where we have two stories. One of them is true. One of them is a lie. And you, the good listener, just have to work out who's telling what. Yeah, you're a smart bunch. You'll be able to work it out. Yeah, Get yourself a little schnit house voucher. Yeah. Coldplay Hotline as well will reopen for a chance to go and see the guys perform live in Perth once in a lifetime opportunity. Flights, accommodation, all that. Oh, magnificent. How good. Oh, how, I think, like only concert in Australia. Yeah. In Perth. Very, very exclusive. And we could be sending you there. Mm. What's on today, mate? Uh, I'm going to head into Channel 7. I'm going to catch up with all my comrades and I'm going to talk some Port Adelaide. Oh, that's like every other day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's fine. You? Yeah, uh, well, I rode my bike in this morning, so I'm just going to... Take my time. Oh, that one with the big ridiculous basket on the front. It's not ridiculous. Yeah, that you side saddle on the way home. I can't imagine you ever understanding what's stylish and what's not. It's a beautiful vintage rose gold bike. How dare you? I'm wearing a t-shirt, a cardigan, shorts, (laughs) socks and Birkenstocks. (laughs) <laughs> What's wrong with that kid? How dare I challenge your style? <laughs> That's <right>. on me. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day. Make sure you listen to the podcast. Have a great Monday, friends. See ya. Adelaide's Jody and Hazy.